up WordPress nerds? In this video, I wanted to go over how you can make your own custom WP CLI command, as well as how it could fit into a real world project. So this is what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we have here um, a custom post type that is called floor plans. And what we need to do is we need to essentially create a bunch of dummy floor plans. Um, if we look at add new right here, we have a um, set of ACF fields. We have a bunch of uh, images, five images, and a handful of text fields um, that we're going to fill in with uh, appropriate numbers. And then we also have a home type and home features. So we're going to um, randomly generate information for all of this and uh, we're gonna do it through the WPCLI. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we do WP, WPC for WP casts, um, we're gonna do generate floor plans, and we're gonna do dash dash amount equals 10. And so what that's gonna do, it's, it's gonna give us a nice little progress bar, it's gonna give us a success message, and then if we go back, we should see 10 new floor plans. And so it randomly gave us a different name for each one of them. Let's just uh, click on the amber. And we have all of our images that we have um, in the media library. And then we have um, some randomly generated numbers for these. And it gave us a home type and a home feature. So we can click on this and it now fills out you know, all of the different um, pieces of information here. So um, this is what we're going to be building. So stick around. Um, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. All right, before we get started, I want to do quickly shout out WPScan.io. Um, WPScan has a suite of products. They have everything from a CLI to a WordPress plugin to a standalone website that you can sign up for. They have a free account where you can um, add all of your websites and manage all of your, um, your security scans from a single dashboard. So right now I have my WPCast.tv website and I've added it to my account and you can run automated or manual scans on your site. So it looks like I just did mine right now um, and it was just a one-off uh, scan. And then you can kind of see the scan results. So it has a nice little report here, just kind of said when it started and ended and any sort of vulnerabilities that came across through your site. It says that I didn't really have anything here. It said that it didn't understand the version of my Ignite Up plugin, but uh, it gives you a full detailed report of what is going on with your site. So for example, if my site was a little bit more vulnerable, it might have some easy to guess passwords. It might have some plugins that are installed with known vulnerabilities abilities or my theme if I had used a, um, a purchase theme or a default theme it might show me some vulnerabilities there as well and then whether or not to upgrade or downgrade or where the next uh, reliable version is at so if you're interested in getting a hacker's eye view of your website so you can kind of be ahead of the game on that I strongly recommend you check out wpscan.io all right let's jump into the rest of the tutorial all right, listen up nerds. We now have zero floor plans here and we are going to create our first uh, WPCLI command. Um, so the best place to do this is actually in a plugin. Um, being in a plugin gives you access to um, commands that I needed f to make this work, whereas just throwing it in the theme in functions.php did not work. And we'll, I'll let you know where that was as soon as we get across it. But we're gonna add a new folder, and this is gonna be called WPC CLI. And then we're going to create a PHP file inside of here with the same name. So we've created essentially a new plugin here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to give it some standard WordPress stuff, which is we need a block comment with plugin name, URL, description, author, version, and URI. Let's go back to our plugins and install it or make sure it's activated, it is installed. And because I don't wanna forget about it later, which I know that I will do if I don't do it right now. 
Um, the next thing that we're going to do real quick is that we are, need some fake data. And there is a composer package that will give us exactly what we want. And it's called Faker. And it gives us a helper factory that lets us, you know, get names, addresses, numbers, numbers between numbers, cities, states, credit card numbers, domain names, all sorts, usernames, passwords, it does everything. So it gives you a nice little way to kind of throw in some dummy data, which is exactly what we're looking for. So while we are in um, this our folder, so I'm gonna open up a terminal inside of my plugin folder, and we're gonna do composer init. And so what this is gonna do is just gonna ask me a few questions. I'm just gonna throw enter all the way down because it does not matter. What does matter is that we install this package now that we are um, have a composer.json. So we're gonna do composer require author name faker. So let's just type that in here. As you can see, we have a composer JSON file that it's going to get added to here in a second. It has now added it and loaded it from the cache. And now we have a composer lock and a vendor folder. So we don't need this terminal window anymore. And we're going to require that file. So we're just getting the current um, directory that we're in with plugin dir path uh, with the magic method of file slash vendor author name faker source autoload.php and that's all right here in um, the instructions so just the path to your to faker source autoload.php um, the other thing that we're going to want to make sure is that we don't do anything unless we know that we're in the cli so wordpress will define wp cli and it will be truthy if we are actively using the CLI. We don't want any of this to happen or to run when we are not working with the CLI. So what the very first thing that we're gonna do next um, is we're going to do WP double colon um, add underscore command. And add underscore, oh, not WP, WP underscore CLI, my bad. It's going to take two things. The first thing is going to be the command that we want to add. And then the second thing that we're going to pass in is a class where all the sub commands live. So what are what is the command and sub command? So when I typed in WP WPC uh, um, generate floor plans and then an argument amount equals 10, this WPC would be the command and generate floor plans would be this sub command and then amount would be an argument that gets passed in so let's kind of break this down we need to add wpc so the first argument that we're going to pass in is wpc it's going to register that with the wpc li the second argument is going to be a class where all of the sub commands exist so we could do generate floor plans we could do generate blog posts, we could do all sorts of things, but we need to have a class that has those all, has all of them. So we're gonna do WPC underscore CLI, and we're gonna create that class right now. Class is WPC CLI. And so what we can then do is create a new method, public function uh, generate floor plans and then so we need to also then so that is actually going to take care of these two things it's going to run WPC it's going to load in this class and then it's going to call this method generate floor plans so anything that we do inside of this function is what's going to happen when somebody types that in however we need to be able to take arguments as well and it's going to pass in two different types of arguments it's going to do regular args it's also going to do associative args so in case that we had something like foo bar, then it would take in um, foo and bar into args and amount into associative args. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So foo is going to be equal to args zero. It comes in as an array. And then bar, you guessed it, is going to be args one. Amount is going to be equal to associative args amount also comes in as an array 
So we can then use the WPCLI, another method um, that's going to be called line. And that's just going to output a line of text. So let's do foo. We'll do bar. And we will do amount. So let's try that, see if it works. We're going to go over to our terminal. We're going to do WP, WPC, generate floor plans, foo bar and then dash dash amount equals 10. So we got foo, we got bar and we got 10. So right now that's working. So we know that we're actually creating our command. So now let's kind of get into the meat of this. We're not going to use foo and bar because all we really care about is amount. That's because we want to know about the amount of floor plans that we want to generate. And so the things that we need to kind of gather up is that the floor plans have a few pieces of information. They have some, and we're going to start here, is they have two custom taxonomies, home types and home features. So condo, single family, townhome, and then home feature has different home features like central air, fireplace, patio, pool, yard, etc. So what we need to do inside of this is we need to gather those up. So let's just grab a list of the terms. So we're going to use a WordPress function called get terms. And we're going to pass in a an associative array of taxonomy, which is going to be home type, which is the slug of the um, custom taxonomy. So that's right up here at the top. Um, and it's what you use to actually register the taxonomy. And then hide empty false, because we want to bring back any of the um, home types, even if there's not a post associated with them, which there won't be because there's there's none of them. There's zero. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we pass that in. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a little um, array map. So we're going to take in the home type term. So it's going to come back with an array of objects and we're going to loop over them with array map and each one's going to come in as home type and we just want to pass back in the term ID. And so we want to gather up an array of term IDs. So every single one of these, which is, you know, it should come back as, you know, four, three, and five. Those are the IDs of these uh, taxonomies. And so that's what home type IDs is going to um, bring in. So we're going to do the same thing, and I'm going to kind of blast through this is we're going to do the same thing with home features. We want to get the IDs of every single home feature that currently exists. So same exact thing here, except for we're wrapping it or we're pulling in home feature as the taxonomy instead of home type, but we're eventually getting an array of IDs. So after that, we need to do two more things uh, before we actually start um, inserting posts or inserting floor plans is that we're going to create a new faker factory, which is just faker equals faker slash factory, double colon create. And we're also going to be making a progress bar. The WP CLI has um, a bunch of utilities in there. Um, like you saw, we can kind of return things to the terminal and it has a really nice one that lets you generate a progress bar. So you can kind of see if it's taking a little bit longer. It just is a nice user experience. So you just do slash WPCLI utils make progress bar, and then you just pass in the string that you want it to have above the progress bar, and then how many it's generating. So um, it's gonna, this is going to eventually be, you know, zero out of 10, one out of 10, two out of 10, three out of 10, things like that and we're going to have it tick every time that we have inserted a post. And so we'll get to that in a second, but we do want to set up faker and the progress bar right away. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually start looping how many ever times the user ent um, entered in the amount. So since we entered in 10, we want to um, loop 10 times. If they do five, we want to loop five. So we're just going to do a for loop. And that for loop is going to be um, less than the amount if it's starting from zero. 
So everything that's gonna we're gonna do is as far as like generating fake data and inserting posts is gonna happen inside of this for loop. So the first thing that we're gonna want to do inside of this for loop is type floor plan equals WP insert post. So every time that we loop over this, we want to insert a new post. So we're gonna wanna have inside of this array post title, and that's gonna be equal to, I prefix all of the four plans with the space, and then we concatenate in faker uh, arrow first name. And so every time that it loops over, it's gonna pick up random first name and and, and append it to the space. We're also going to want to make sure that the post status is published and that the post type is floor plan. So now that we've got that, hopefully that should actually insert a post or insert a floor plan. So now what we need to do is we need now need to attach all of the taxonomies to it and we need to attach meta information because if you remember, when we were looking at um, floor plans, we had all of this meta information here in the center, which is advanced custom fields. So we're gonna need to generate information for each of these pieces of meta information and plug it into this post that we just created. So normally what I would do is I would do tax input which you can pass into uh, an insert post. And we would fill it out with, you know, home type is equal to that array of IDs that we created. However, this won't work when we're doing it in the CLI. And I spent like two hours trying to figure out why it wasn't working. Well, because behind the scenes, WP insert post is using a function that requires a logged in user to um, run it. So it was failing and I just could not figure out why. However, what we can use, use instead is once this post is inserted, the ID of that post is gonna be returned into floor plan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use WP set object terms. We're gonna give it the post ID, which is floor plan, and then ignore this for a second. And the last thing is what the taxonomy is that we want to um, add our um, IDs with too. Um, and so this center thing is going to be, we want to get a random item from our home type, type terms, home type IDs array. So this came back with an array of IDs that what is either gonna represent single family, condo or townhome. And so what we want is we want to do array Rand, so we want to get the random item from an array, and that's going to be the home type ID. So it's going to pick a random item out of the home type IDs. However, what array Rand does is it gives you back the key of the item. So we don't want because that's going to return zero, one, or zero, one, or two, and because there's only three items. And so what we want to do is we want to array flip that. So it's going to, instead of um, 0, 1, 2, it's actually going to be the ID of the um, home type. And then we're just going to pass in one, I mean, into array rand. It defaults to only picking one, but just because it's going to make a lot more sense when we do the second one, where we're going to want three. And instead of home type IDs, we want home feature uh, IDs, home feature IDs, and instead of um, home type, we want home feature. So that's going to give us three home features randomly and one home type. After that, we then need to um, get some images set up. So I have a handful of images that I've already uploaded into the media library that I just want to use. Now, Faker does give you the option to pass in URLs and stuff like that, but I already had some like pictures of homes that I just wanted to use. So I grabbed all of their IDs, like 37 right here, and I created an array of possible images that I care about. So 
these are the five images that I just want to put in every single post just in random order. And so what I want to do is I want to get the five ACF fields field keys over here in custom fields. Oh, we got the field group already open. So we have these field keys for featured images and interiors um, one through four. And we want to use these keys and update post meta according to it. Um, advanced custom fields likes it went to have you use those uh, uh, field keys when creating new posts. Instead of just typing in, you know, interior one, it likes it likes you to use these field keys. It helps it keep track of the settings that exist inside of each one of these. So fun little fact. And so we're going to for each over each of these image keys. So for each image keys as key, we want to update the field. So update field, we're going to take in the key. So, you know, field 5DF, whatever. And we're going to bring in a possible, oh, we can actually do it this other way, the array rand array flip method. So let's do that. So array rand, and we're going to do array flip, and then we need to give it the um, possible image keys, so or possible images. So that will give us a single random image from here, and it's going to put it into each of these. So that's as easy as that goes. And then the rest of these, are going to be updating um, the kind of meta fields for number of baths, number of beds, starting price, square footage. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm just gonna kind of uh, blast through this, just do one together, and then I'll kind of just go through the rest real quick. So it's gonna be update field and the field key. So we're gonna be grabbing the field key for number of baths, or this one is number of beds. So number of beds, and we're going to say faker arrow number between two and five. So a number between two and five is going to go in there, and we're passing it the floor plan ID. So let's just do that for all of them here. And I'll kind of explain it as we go. Just paste all of those in. So beds, numbers between two and five, bathrooms between one and five, square footage between 1500 and 3000 and um, starting price between 250,000 and 400,000. So hopefully that makes sense. So remember though, we're inside of this for loop. And so once we've submitted or inserted a post and given it all of its meta information, we want to take that progress bar and say one more has been completed. So you can just do um, progress arrow tick. And so remember we set up this way that we wanted it to go up 10 times. And so we're gonna say that to go up by one now. So it's gonna be do the zero, one, two, three, four, you know what I'm talking about, you know how to count. <laughs> um, but once that's all done and we've, we've looped through every single one of these, we are going to um, finish the progress bar so we can do progress finish. And then we are also going to do um, a success message, WP CLI double colon success. And we're gonna do dollar amount and concatenate floor plans generated. Some exclamation marks, because why not? So what that should do is that should give us everything we need. We now can have a progress bar. We're inserting posts. We've got, we're attaching all of the meta information, all of the custom taxonomies. Let's give it a whirl. Let's clear this out and let's do WP, WPC, uh, generate floor plans, dash, dash amount is, let's do 20 generating all the floor plans, 20 floor plans generated. 
and let's view how many floor plans we have. All right, so now we have all of these floor plans and hopefully if we go in here, we should have, yep, town home, garage, pool, yard, images, number of baths, number of beds, starting price, square footage, all the way around. So if we go visit the site, I mean, that should just pop up. We got all of these, you can see all the floor plans and now we've got them all and they all seem very random so this is a great way for you to kind of like you know give yourself a break <laughs> and uh you know because normally what we'd have to do is you'd have to go into here and you know add a bunch of floor plans one by one maybe even duplicating them if you didn't care that they were different but with with faker and kind of doing it this way you you can get so much more bang for your buck like we spent a little bit of time figuring this out but you know you can add a command to have them all delete and then add even more and just kind of get a little bit crazy and also think about this if you wanted to containerize it throw it up in into a build and then have run tests on it and just like really try and like break apart your code with uh, some of these uh, you know auto generated posts to see like what can kind of break it so hopefully you guys found this useful I challenge you to make your own um, uh, WPCLI command um, obviously you have to have it installed so if you have don't have it installed I have a video which I'll link to up above that goes over how to install it and kind of just some basic usages of it but I want to thank my patrons for supporting me. We just got a, um, our third exclusive video just last week where we deployed a WordPress site um, when you just get pushed to a repository and we used Buddy to kind of move the files over to a, a DigitalOcean droplet. It was all in bedrock. It was a really fun video. So um, thanks to all my patrons for supporting me so we could do that video. If you're interested in watching it, um, go ahead and sign up to, for Patreon. The link's down in the description. We do exclusive videos every month and we just I just kind of ask everybody what they want to what, the, what they want me to go over and we and we do it but i really appreciate the support hopefully you guys found this uh video useful give it a thumbs up if you did leave me a comment let me know if you'd like me to do more wpcli things but i appreciate you watching and i will see you in the next one <laughs>